The Goblin headquarters is basically done as a structure. At this point, after I've sort of created it, I start doing what I call the upgrades, which is just adding little details to sort of make it more goblin-y. Now in this case, uh, what I typically do is I add some string uh, to simulate rope, and I'll probably have some of it going around. Uh, I use uh, red, bright red, for tipping the sharp points, you know, to look like they've been bloodied or just painted red. I recently bought this piece of canvas here, which I've really been looking forward to adding something uh, like this to my goblin um, structures because the canvas uh, can be weathered. I can, I can put some wash on it to darken it. But what I want to do is I think I want to add some flags and banners uh, to the outside. And then finally, the big thing I want to do is I've been wanting to make a drum, a battle drum that will go in here. At first, I thought I was going to put it up high and uh, have some staircases leading up to it. But I think what I want to do instead is this, this, uh, this structure has this open area down here. So what I want to do is I want to mount the drum down in here and I'm probably going to create some ladders for the, the goblins to climb down from the tower down to here to access the, the drum. Uh, I'm going to cover the drum with the canvas. Um, I've tried to make a drum earlier and it totally failed. Horrible, horrible experiment, so I'm going to start over. I think I've got a grasp on what I want to do this time. So before I begin, um, the first thing I want to do is I want to glue this together so it's one solid structure. Now I am gluing the plain face. There are three windows, three, three sides with windows and one without. And those are going to go up against this triangular shape. So what I'm going to do right here is I'm just going to look, and I did a pretty good job of making it so that uh, the the second level matches the um, the second level matches the ceiling. So I'm just going to stick this on here, and hopefully that glue will uh, will will get some some attachment to the solid piece because this thing is sort of imperfect. There it's not flat on flat so I had to put a lot of glue on here to hopefully hold it together and what I may end up doing is I may end up having to squeeze some down in there and it's not looking I can look down in there and sort of see that it's it is um, making a connection but uh, I think it's just gonna take a while for the glue to dry so let me go ahead and put some on this side I'm just like I said I'm just squeezing a lot of glue here hoping hoping some of it grabs and then I'm going to try to get this one about the same distance. That'll work. Now these uh, these um, towers are leaning, so they're not they're not getting a really good uh, attachment. So in the end, what I'm going to do is once it's all said and done, I'm going to glue this down to a piece of chipboard and cut out sort of an area that I can apply sand to, sort of like I did for this. I'll show you. So here's the original one. Just, you know, something I can add around. And that piece will also help hold the towers structurally together. Uh, because I just don't know how well this glue is going to do. And finally, I need to put some glue on this back piece. And granted, I'm just, I mean, I'm really putting it on here thick. Uh, you may decide you want to use these towers individually and that you'd prefer not to glue them together. That's your call. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I would prefer them to be one, I would prefer this to be one unit and to stick together. So that's why I am gluing it together. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to let that glue dry really well. If I find that it's just not uh, strong enough, I'll go ahead and apply the chipboard on the bottom. But I'm going to let this glue cool down for a little bit and then we'll keep going. The glue is cooled and they are on there pretty good, but I'm just not willing to risk it. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to trace trace around the entire structure so I know where to put the glue. And I'm going to go ahead and glue this down to the chipboard just for a little added strength while I'm, while I'm adding all the uh, upgrades to it. So there we go, got the outline. And here, I'm not going to do hot glue because by the time I put hot glue over here or get over here, this will be cooled. So I'm going to just use um, straight up tacky glue. Uh, it should be sufficient to hold everything down. 
Uh, the only problem is it's just going to take a little while to dry. But right now the hot glue is holding it enough that I can, I can glue it down with tacky glue and then start working on it. down on there <laughs> I could feel it go squish so I know that that is going to hold it well all right so I'm gonna go ahead I can let that glue dry and we can get started on adding some of the upgrades okay first upgrade I am going to do is adding some banners to the towers so what I'm gonna do right now is I have this canvas this was about a dollar dollar fifty at uh, the hobby shop I'm not making wide canvases. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make two per tower. One's going to hang down this side, one's going to hang down this side. So they'll be sort of thin. I probably will uh, give them um, a point at the end. And then I'm going to do some sort of goblin-y looking uh, um, writing. Um, I don't know. Writing may not be the right word. Scrawl. So I've got two strips here. And what I'm going to do is they, you know what, they're a little long. So I can just cut these in half, and then I'll have two for each side. Two for there, two for here. All right. Then I'm going to take it, and I'm just going to cut sort of a point off. Like that. Do that on all four of them. And I don't know, you know, this canvas is starting to thread, so I may have to um, apply some glue to it so it doesn't unravel. But then again, that can add to the overall effect. Uh, I, you do want them looking a little ratty. All right. So four, four little uh, banners to hang down. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some red paint here and this may be, this may be, um, this could go either way. I, I just don't know. This is an experiment. So I'm going to squirt some red on there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a, uh, a skewer here. Non, I don't want the tip. I want, I want to get a good bit of paint on there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scrawl some, some funny looking symbols on here. Okay. Nothing fancy. Just, uh, you know, I don't speak goblin, but I don't know anyone that does. So I'm just gonna, and they're all gonna be different. I, I want, um, I want something, I want something uh, that definitely looks like writing, um, but, uh, but, but that's not intelligible. All right. And they're they're a little clean right now, so don't worry. I'm gonna dirty them up a little bit. And let's see. Probably a brush might have been better, but I think that a, I, 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 my thinking was a brush was going to be too perfect, too too clean looking. All right, there we go. Uh, nothing fancy there, just some some ugly looking goblin script. All right, before I glue them on, next thing I want to do is now this is uh, this is very low tech. All right, so yeah, just. Uh, don't make fun of me for doing this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer them over to a piece of chipboard here that I don't care about. And if you're like me, you probably have a cup of dirty water for your um, from your rinsing your brushes. Now I do have wash, but I'm going to try this first. It just seems like it might be a good way. Now the one thing I need to do is let these uh, let these dry. But what I was thinking is. Instead of um, painting them on the side that they are, uh, or instead of washing them on the side they're painted, I want to see what happens when I apply this wash. I'm using a thick brush here. I want to put it on the back side and see if it bleeds through. It may not. I may find that it doesn't bleed through. But that's why I'm putting it on, on uh, the other side. If it doesn't work, I can always move it around. It doesn't look like it's bleeding through. But who knows? Let's see. I can I can sort of help the process out. And remember this is canvas, so any liquid you put down is going to 
eventually soak up a little bit. All right, so let me show you what it looked like after they, after it sort of fed in. It looks very ratty. There's a couple little spots I think that'll that will eventually. There we go. And the paint smeared just a little bit, not enough for me to like really be concerned. So I'm actually kind of cool with it. It uh, it looks hideous. <laughs> it looks very gobliny. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dab this on there and. I'm, I'm going heavy. I mean, it, I just put it down on there and let that let that sink in. It's not messing with the red paint at all. There's a little bit of little bit of, of um, what do you call it smear, but not enough to make it something I don't want to do. So uh, I don't know if you can see those. So yeah, there we go. Very happy with how that turned out. And I'll probably I'm going to set these aside and let these dry before I hang them on there. I need them to be good and dry. All right, for the drum, the drum is a little bit tricky because you're trying to take a canvas piece and make it fit around a circle. So I tried this again earlier and it failed, so I think I've learned my lesson. So let me show you what I'm going to do. I am now traditionally the old style drums, the skin was was stretched on both uh, put on both sides and stretched, and then thread you know like rope was used to um, sort of thread it like sew it together to tighten it. I, I really don't want to thread uh, canvas around. I don't, I'm not making a real drum, so I've got to fake it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm drawing a circle sort of around, not, not a great circle, just enough to give me some room to, to get this glued on. All right. First thing you want to do is you want to cut two of these. By the way, cutting canvas is not not exactly. Let me change to my other scissors. That might be a little sharper. All right. So again, you don't have. Don't worry about this being a perfect circle. Just make sure it's larger than your um, than the the base you're doing. And what I've chosen here is a cardboard ring. I don't even remember what this was. Let's see. It says glue dots on the inside. So apparently this must have held some glue dots at some point. What you want is you want just enough. Uh, just enough extra hanging over the side that you're going to make snips in it so you can glue it down and I'll show you what I'm talking about so the first thing let me actually cut two of these while I'm at it so I can kill two birds with one stone um, you're going to glue the canvas uh, I would suggest hot gluing it to the uh, to the circle so I'm gonna put some hot glue around the edge of that ring right there and then I'm going to press these down and let that glue uh, hard or cool really well before I continue. All right, so they're not they're not perfect. They're not perfect circles. Don't have to be. So take your glue gun and just on one side, just lay down a bead of glue all the way around. Make sure you cover it good because you don't want the can you don't want the drum the canvas coming off. Take one piece of your canvas center it as best you can and just press it down make sure the glue gets you know and then pull it a little bit before it really cools so you get a good tight good tight look can you hear that <laughs> tight um, it doesn't take long to the, it won't take long for the uh, hot glue to cool so don't worry that you can just keep going do the other side and then again put it down and then pull it tight Pat it down and then start pulling it so, so you get that good, tight fit for the canvas. Yeah, that'll work. All right. Now you'll notice I have this edge that goes all the way around, right? All right, so here's the trick. You know, obviously to make that fit, you, if, you, if you just start gluing it down, you're going to end up with a bunch of pinched canvas that's just, I don't know, that might look good. But I think what, what we can do here is I'm going to try every 45 degrees. I'm going to make a snip, snip. So make it at the 12 o'clock, you know, 1.30, 3 o'clock, like that. Just go all the way around. Don't have to be exact. Just do the best you can. So these are going to allow me to, to, to glue it down individually. And there will be some overlap, but I think it'll be okay. So... 
I think the best way to do this is to put the glue actually on the tab you cut and then press it down. So let me see if I can show you this. I'm going I'm to squeeze some glue there, let it cool for just a couple seconds, and then I'm going to press it down really well. Make sure these, make sure the ones to the side, you know, don't get glued down with it. Just press it down, and there you go. And then just work your way all the way around. And after you do that, do the other side. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to time lapse this so you don't have to watch the entire thing. All right, <laughs> one oversized goblin drum, not done yet. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting a, another strip of the canvas. All right, I am going to probably apply a wash to this that's not the same color as this. Um, I am gonna weather this, but I'll have to wait and see what these uh, banners look like with that uh, wash on them. If they're too dark, I may go with a lighter wash. The good news is I have various washes that I can apply so I can control the darkness or lightness of it. So what I'm what I'm thinking of doing is I'm going to I'm going to weather the the drum and then I'm going to glue this all the way around uh, sort of as a um, just so it's just visually distinct. It'll be a slightly different color, but I'm not going to do that just yet. What I'm going to do right now is I am going to carefully weather this drum. I think what I want to do first, however, is I want to paint something on it um, that is goblin-y. So I'm going to use a paintbrush to do this. Something like that. Just my artistic skills are not all that great, but I just want something that looks like they would, you know, call, call to war here. I'm going to do both sides as well for, the, uh, for my player who's facing the opposite direction of me and seeing the back of the Goblin HQ. So what I'm going to do is, once again, I'm going to take the, uh, the paint wash here. And I'm going to uh, I'm going to just give it. I'm not going to go as heavy as I did over there. I think I'm going to be very careful with this. I want to I don't want to get it too too wet. There we go. That's getting more like what I was wanting. Okay. Now let me glue down the stretch of white canvas. So I'm just going to lay down a bead of hot glue, do a little bit at a time. And now I have a drum. All right, while everything is drying, I'm going to go ahead and tip these in red since I've got some red paint here. Uh, I will probably apply a little dark white. These are going to be very bright, so don't worry about that. I will tone them down eventually. I just want to, I like the bright red because I can see where I've done it. So I'm just, like I said, I'm just hitting the spikes uh, randomly. Just don't, don't make it look perfect. Just put a splotch on there and just run your brush up it and be done with it. Uh, try to hit them all because if you don't, it will look weird if you have one that's not. Uh, either do them all or don't do them. At, don't do them at all. And you're going to want to make sure you rotate this all the way around so you can see it front and back. Uh, so you get them on the front and the, you know, get get the the tips all the way around. There will be there will be sections you miss and you'll catch it later. So I'm just rotating it around. I'm looking to make sure I get get it on all sides.
And if I missed any earlier, if I missed any, that's no problem. I'll go back and add them later. Um, I'm also going to get the teeth on the front of the tower where the, um, right here, I'm going to do those. I'm going to do those really, not a lot. I don't need a whole lot on those. Just, just enough to, to draw it visually. There we go. More on that one. All right. Again, don't go crazy. Just just enough to, to give it that that look. All right. Um, this is still a little damp, and the signs are, and the uh, banners are a little damp. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to work on the stand for the drum. Okay, for the drum, I want a small stand where the goblins would stand in front of it and maybe you know hit it. So I'm not. It can't be too big. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece of chipboard. Uh, three inches by two inches. I've got a grid here, so that helps. Uh, I'm just going to cut this off and test that it fits down in here. And it does. It will sit there. I want it to sit up maybe a half an inch. So what I've got now is, now that I have the uh, the square, I'm going to turn this into uh, planks. All right. So the first thing I need to do, you've probably already figured this out, is we're going to make just a small frame for the uh, for the the planks to stand on and again I want it to be a half inch and I want spikes on the four corners so I'm just gonna eyeball this I'm gonna cut I'm gonna put my finger right here and this is where I am going to clip one of these skewers and then I will do a whole I'll do three more all right so I got one keep the ends keep keep all the pieces we're gonna use them all one two three and one more four all right so I've got the uh, four pieces I want to also make sure yeah that should work so I'm not planking this yet I'm, I'm going to make the standing structure so it needs to be uh, half inch so I'm just going to apply a little bit of glue here and take one of these pieces that I cut off and I'm going to put it on here like so. Take another one of these. I want to try to make this, try, I, want, I want the drum to sort of be um, level. So I'm going to use my cutting mat here to apply a little glue. Let's see, it's right there. Just want before the glue cools. I want to make sure it's level. Actually, I need to scoot it over, don't I? All right, that looks pretty good. Right there. Need to do two more, or the other side. So I'm just going to lay these down and visually take another piece. This piece is a little. That's too short. This is just right. All right. Oops. Come on now. All right, so that one's done. And I'm going to put this right about there. And this one right about there. And to clear that one here. I'm trying to make them similar in, in uh, dimensions. Now what I may have to do in just a minute is apply some extra glue just for reinforcement because these are a little little wonky, a little loose. All right, so I've got two pieces here that one's the front, one's the back, like this. And the only other thing I want to do now is glue two cross uh, glue two cross pieces. Now I need to make sure that the drum fits down in there. So let me get my blocks here so I can sort of make sure this is going to work. I want that on the inside, that on the outside. So as long as the drum, and I want to give room for it to put some goblin miniatures to beat the drum. So I will, well, I, you know, I know what the width is, so it's going to be, it's going to be about this width. All right. So I am going to take another dowel here. I'm going to cut it to the width of these planks. that right, right I did 
And do one more. And I'm going to glue these over these ends. Uh, you'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. Um, so just the, the end here, I'm going to put a little drop of glue. I'm going to put this on top of there like so. See that? Let it cool a little bit. Make sure it's level. I'm looking at it. Anytime you build something from skewers or toothpicks, it, you know, leveling's a little bit difficult unless you're using things visually like the 321 blocks. And then I need to put a drop of glue here. This should do one side. Let's see, like that. see what I'm doing? Just making a little stand for the drum. I can probably go ahead and set this down. Yep. And whoop. Stay put. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some glue on one end and the other end. And this will create the strength to hold this little thing together. And then I can plank it. All right, there we go. So there's the little stand. All right, the planks, I need to go ahead and cut these to plank this little stand. So remember, you sort of, you know, ruin the edges. Don't make them perfect. There's going to be some gaps, so I'm not worried about running out. If I need to, I'll cut another three, three by two piece. Now you may be wondering why, or why didn't you do this as part of the overall structure? Well, I wanted a drum, but you may decide that you want to add, say, I don't know, a catapult or something else to the roof. I didn't want to lock you in. Uh, to um, to anything so this is why I call this an upgrade your upgrades may differ than my, they may uh, be different than mine because I, I don't know what you're gonna want to, to do with your goblin uh, terrain for me I always thought it would be cool to have um, you know all these goblin structures and then it occurred to me that a goblin drum would be kinda cool to have and the place for it to me at least would be the goblin uh, the generals headquarters here so again, what we're going to do is we're going to lay down a, a, a bead of glue, just two or three planks wide, doesn't have to be much. Do it, do it a little at a time so that you have time to get it settled. And remember, leave a gap, make it look imperfect. Okay. And after this is done, I will go prime this and, I'll, and I will um, weather it exactly like I did the towers. I'll put a black undercoat or prime it with black, then I'll hit it with um, burnt sienna, and then I will weather it with gray and white to get that weathered, weathered look. Now whether you decide to glue this on, I, that's up to you. Um, I probably will glue it on just so I don't accidentally lose it. Uh, I would hate for it to fall off or whatever, so I will probably actually glue that down here to the roof, but uh, I'm not going to do it obviously till it's all said and done. So there we have a, a, uh, a nice little stand for the drum. The drum will go on here like so. The only thing I want to do is uh, I, do, I definitely want to glue the drum to it so it doesn't roll, but I'm going to raise the drum up just a hair, just a little bit. To do that, I'm going to add legs. So I'm going to take a piece like this, I'm going to cut two little nubs off, very, very small, okay, nothing big, and I'm going to glue these to the drum to sort of act as feet, and I'm going to need four of these, I just, I don't know why I didn't think of that, so it just works out that these will be perfectly sized. All right, so I got four of these, and I'm just going to go, let's see, how am I going to do this? I'll do one first. I'll do a nub there and a nub there. And I'm going to angle them sort of out. Like, like that. Can you see that? And then I'll angle the other two over here so they'll sit, so the drum will actually sit a little higher. Don't want it to don't want it to be too I'm running out of glue sticks. 
I don't want the drum to be too high, so I'm going to make sure I do this over here where the feet keep the drum just barely off the surface. And I'm eyeballing this, totally eyeballing this. Can you see that? I've drawn a line from the foot to the foot, and it'll, it won't make it that tall. Ah, won't make it that tall off of the uh, the drum. Yeah, the drum doesn't sit that far off. All right, so now the drum has feet. The stand is done, and all I need to do now is weather the legs and the stand. So I'm going to go ahead and prime those, and we'll come back. Okay, time to weather the little drum stand here. All I'm going to do is use some uh, of the uh, burnt sienna to uh, to give it that orangey c color. And I think what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to take just to make this easier. I'm going to take the bottom of it to a It'll be, be a little easier for me to hold it. There we go. So I can just rotate it around. All right. Load up the brush a little bit. And if you'll remember from what I said earlier, this is going to get a little orangey, which is fine. It will tone down a little bit. You know what? I think I broke this. I did. Let me repair this with a little glue, hot glue here. When I was um, when I was painting it black, one of the uh, one of the posts gave out. No big problem there. All right, keep going. Get a little more orangey. Remember, brush the uh, the po posts. Get them covered too, so it doesn't look weird. Get the sides. Never know which side's going to be sitting out, so do them all. And again, you can see it's not not that orangey yet. So I'm going to get some more on here. There we go. Now I'm getting the orange color. See that? That orange color is the trick. All right. While I'm at it, I'll go ahead and paint the drum legs. Try to get those weathered a little bit. Don't have to do a lot on those. There's not much real estate on them. Just get them from all sides. And then the next process is to use a light gray for the next uh, bit of weathering. So I'm using, um, I'm trying to remember, did I use graphite? No, I used the elephant gray. I used the elephant gray on these. And again, the gray and the white, remember, you don't have to go crazy with it. Just a little bit will do. Most of it will be covered, so it doesn't really matter. You're not going to see it much. And then we'll finish up with a little bit of white. Just a little bit, not a whole lot. It's a little light right now, but it will darken as, uh, as it dries. And then, oh yeah, I forgot to do the, uh, <laughs> have to do the feet of the uh, thing. I'm just going to mix up a whole bunch of this. White gray, that doesn't matter. Oh yeah. yeah. That'll work. All right. Now, I'm going to glue this on here so that it doesn't go flying off. And just uh, the glue will probably. I may have to reinforce this in a little bit, but at least this will tack it on where I want it to be. There 
we go. One drum, one little stand. I didn't red tip these. I'll go ahead and do that now. All right, there is my stand and drum. Okay. All right, now let's see. This glue should have dried well by now. Pull this over. So now I have a drum stand that I want to glue down in the center here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and add glue to the four bases. Try and center it as best I can. All right, there we go. So far, so good. You know, I may, I may clip these two off. You know what? I'm going to do that right now. I don't like them. Uh, if you do, um, no problem. But I'm just going to clip them down, and because I, I want that drum visible. There we go. So what I'm going to do now is, since I've got some some burnt umber here. I will just, uh, you know what, no, I can just soak those, I'm just going to touch the tips of them with some of this black wash and it'll just, it'll it'll darken them so I don't have to, uh, to worry about them. All right, so, so far, here we go. <laughs> I'm loving this. Oh man, all right, so now I have these little flags, uh, banners that I want to get glued on here. So I was thinking... For these, I'll probably hang them right there at the at the at the edge. So just a dab of glue and put it right there. And I'm not going to glue the whole thing flat because I kind of want it to come off and look like it's three dimensional. Put that one there. And again, if you want more flags, add more flags. If you want more. You know, blood spear, pokey, you know, tips, add more. Uh, whatever whatever makes it look, in your mind, um, complete, that's what you want to do. All right, so far I've got, oh, I don't really want to do too much more on this. I'm probably going to do a little bit of rope work, uh, but um, that's only because most of my terrain pieces do have a little bit of rope. So let me go ahead and figure out what I'm going to do there, and we'll come back in just a second and do that part. All right, here's what I have so far. And my last thing that I want to do on it before I work on the base is add some rope element. Now for this, I just used some string. This is, you know, you can see the color of it. Uh, I'll put a wash on it, which will actually darken it a little bit. But before I do that, what I think I'm going to do is uh, I want to run some rope from these two posts down to the end down here. Why? I don't know. Goblins to me just seem to sort of like to tie rope, probably to reinforce things so they don't fall down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie this here and I'm going to I'm going to double knot it so it doesn't come off. And if you want, you don't have to, you can add a drop of hot glue and I'm going to spin this to the back so it's sort of hidden. You can add a drop of hot glue at the very base of the rope or the string, and it'll just lock it in place so that it doesn't uh, doesn't come undone. Now I'm going to trim trim this so it's not visible, and then eh, you know, like I said, down here at the bottom, I'm just going to tie it to this little bitty uh, piece right here that's sticking out. Remember how I told you sometimes I like to leave posts of the structure, the interior structure uh, sticking out. They make good places to do what I'm about to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie a little knot. I'm going to put it around there and then I'm going to tighten it. Now, now double knotting this is going to be a little tricky. So to maintain the um, to maintain the tension on the rope, that's where I'll put a little drop of glue. And after I put the glue on, I dab it with my finger a little bit just to sort of spread it so you don't see a knot of glue there. I'm going to let that dry good before I go trim it. And then I'm going to just do it on this other side. And I may I may do some more. Let's just see what this looks like. Uh, I, I really wanted, I wanted to do one from this tip to this tip, like hanging over, and maybe put some more flags. 
but I think that would interfere with the drum in the center, so I'm not going to do that. Um, I, I'm no, uh, I'm no visual expert, but I know that sometimes when you make these terrain pieces, uh, you want to make sure not to steal the thunder from whatever is, draws the eye. And in this case, I think the drum is one of those objects that sort of draws the eye. And I don't want to, I don't want to mess it up. All right, there we go. Trim this, and then just. I'm just cutting off a, a, enough of it that I can tie that little loop uh, to go around the post down there. And remember, you just do don't double knot this. Just just do one and pull it so the string is somewhat taut, and then use the glue to secure that knot. And that should keep the tension on the rope. All right, so far, so good. Um, what else could we do? Oh, well, none of these poles are sticking up way high where I could run some vertical string. So I think what I'm going to do here, the, the, the drum is the interesting part. Would they secure the drum with string to keep it from falling? I don't know, probably not, maybe. Uh, I'm not going to do it. I don't want to attach anything to the drum. So I think for this remaining bit of string, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to work from behind so you can see this. I'm going to start at this front point and I'm just going to go from pole to pole and go behind and just give it give it a string, a, 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 some sort of element of string rope. And I'm going to do it sort of high where it'll be visible. And this one I will double knot just because I don't want to, I don't want it to accidentally come off, uh, and then I'll apply the little drop of glue on the back side here, just to secure it in place. And this drop of glue, by the way, it's a, it's touching the string and the um, skewer, okay, just to sort of keep it from um, keep it from moving. Now, here's what I'm doing. I don't know how many times I'm going to wrap around, but I'm just trying to get an idea of how much string. So I go once, and then I'm going to give myself double that, just in case I make any mistakes. String is cheap, and uh, it won't cost me anything to cut a little extra. So now what I'm going to do is, now that I've got this front piece secure, I'm not, I don't have to glue on any more of these. I'm just, what I'm going to do is I'm going to double wrap one, two, around each of the poles like that. And you can, you can put a drop of glue in there if you're really worried, but if you put tension on it like I'm doing, if you pull it sort of tight, uh, it's not going to go anywhere. One, two, all right. Do you see what I'm doing here? Just taking the string all the way around. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cross over to this one back here, go around it twice, three times maybe, and then I'm just mark I'm making my way back to the front. And I probably, you know what, I probably will go back and add some glue to these just to keep that tension on there. All right, so one and two. Man, this gets tricky. <laughs> All right, now there's one, there's two. All right, pull it tight. Man, these things are sharp. Ow. Okay. All right. You know, pull, pull on the string on one and then pull it on another. Try not to break the skewers but you just want that tension on there so the string never looks like it's gone slack. And then for this final one, I am going to wrap a few times around and I'll have to secure this with glue. It's just gonna be, if I try to tie a knot, I'm gonna release that tension and I don't wanna do that. So here's how I do it. I take a drop of glue, I put it on and then I wrap it a couple more times. Uh, I put a, put, put a pretty big drop of hot glue and then I wrap it around one more time and get it in that glue there we go do it a couple times you can't really can't really do too much securing of the of the rope there we go all right there we go now the rope is a little too white so again all you have to do is use a wash I have just a standard wash here. I could use the stuff from the paint right here, but uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show you there's there's really hardly any difference. Um, this was just made up specifically 
to it doesn't have cl clumps in it and stuff like that so I'm gonna use a very very fine brush and I'm just going to brush the rope I don't want to make it black I want it to still look like rope so this is gonna give it sort of a brown just a dirty brown look almost sand color when it's done I will take some pictures and you'll be able to see that it's um, it's not very dark at all I accidentally went too dark once on one of the the ropes it, it got really dark I put too heavy of a wash on it so I've since decided that when I do the ropes I'm using this instead of what I call the army painter dark tone that dark tone was way too dark it just took it down too much and I may find that this is not dark enough although I can tell that it is it is coloring the string it's a uh, it's not it's not doing that much so I don't know I may have to use uh, something else to to, to do the uh, string but for now I'm just gonna go with this if I find that it's not dark enough I'll go back later and add a dark darker wash but I want to see if maybe two coats of this uh, this wash will will dull it down I'll let it dry real good and then I'll hit it with one more coat and we'll see if it does it does what it needs to do all right get the ends of the string too um, the hot glue may prevent some of the wash from absorbing so you may end up with a dark knot if you have that just touch it with a piece of with a, a little dab of brown paint and it's enough to conceal it so that it doesn't look out of place like you have this robe and then you have this big white knot just dab it with a little brown paint and it's it's enough to take it out take it down a few notches yeah I'm gonna definitely I think I'm definitely gonna have to go over this string with um, with either a darker wash or a second coat of this but I don't even know if a second coats gonna do it but not gonna sh won't know until I actually let it dry and let's see let me show it to you and see what you think yeah it's still in the video it still looks very white there's a brownish hue to it but I think I may have to go darker but there's no point in doing that right now because uh, it's not dry so now what I want to do is I want to cut this out uh, and I'm just using using my heavier scissors here uh, I give myself about where I can I give myself about an inch inch gap uh, some of it I won't be able to do that but um, cut it cut a random cut it cut it randomly uh, as best you can no 90 degree corners try to avoid that it just doesn't look natural um, almost done I'll show you the now for the entrance I'll probably I'm just sort of making a zigzag line on it all right can you see this there we go so very uneven around it and um, keep the waste chipboard always find a use for it now the final step is to coat this in glue and then apply whatever basing you want I use sand I used to use regular old uh, sand to do this and I do it mainly because all of mine will match you could do rocks uh, grass whatever whatever you want but I'm gonna go ahead and add the uh, add the glue and sand up next this gets a little messy so I'm gonna use this plastic bin to catch the sand uh, when I pour it over I'm gonna time-lapse most of this video but I just want to show you this is real simple I use um, tacky glue you could use just standard Elmer's white glue uh, PVA glues I guess is what they call it but uh, I like the tacky it, it just seems to hold a bit better and what I do is um, I first you know try to cover as much of the the area as I can and then I use my finger to just sort of um, smear it around if it gets a little on the structure you can brush it off with your fingernail or you can just leave it it doesn't really doesn't really do your your eye isn't going to be drawn to it uh, at least in, in my opinion you don't see it um, like like you might think you would uh, you'll get a little every now and then you will get a little sand on your structure and that's just that's just okay all right so there we go so now I'm gonna smear this and um, the other reason I like the tacky glue is it, because it's sort of thicker you can smear it a little better the the white glue the standard white glue is a little runny in my opinion 
Now, you can continue the sand into here, but I, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave it like that. All right, so after you smear, and don't do this all at once. Just do a little section at a time. It'll be less messy. I tend to do, like I say, about six to eight inches of, uh, of, of glue, and then I'll do the sand, and then um, do more glue. All right, so I just basically, <clears throat> since I'm using the container, I don't care about, um, I'll pour the sand back in. I just basically just pour it over. Just pour it over, dump it, and you can see you get a nice, nice coverage of sand there. And then before I go on, I just pour this back in, pour this back in, and start the whole process over. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to time lapse this so you don't have to watch me glue the entire thing. And then we'll come back and look at the entire structure when it's done. All right, there you go. One goblin headquarters, suitable for a goblin general or a commander. Three towers, a central area, and a war drum on the roof to, uh, to call the army to arms. I really hope you enjoyed watching this series. Uh, one of the things I wanted to do with this particular series of videos was go into a little more detail. In my previous Goblin Terrain, you know, those videos were edited somewhat heavily. You, you saw a lot of the work I put in, but not all of it. With this series, my goal was to try and do as little editing as possible so you get the full effect of the amount of work that goes into creating something like this. What my real hope is, is that some of you out there will take this series and follow my instructions and create something very similar to this, you know, make it your own, add some different elements to it. But I wanted to give you start to finish uh, a goblin structure that showed 95% of everything I do, cutting out very little, and I think I did that. I would love your feedback on this. If you want to see more of this kind of video down the road, something that's, you know, more involved, longer coverage of the actual making, maybe break it up into, into more videos, fewer videos. I don't know. You tell me. So again, would love your feedback on whether you want to see more of these kind of videos. I, they may be more goblin terrain. They could be science fiction terrain. I don't know. But I'm open to suggestions, so please let me know. So this one, <laughs> I just love this. This one just um, came together. I love the drum. I love the war drum. I love the entrance with the spiked teeth. Uh, it's it, it just totally fits in with my other goblin terrain. So thank you for joining me on this uh, video series. If you enjoyed this, uh, I would ask that you maybe consider becoming a Patreon or a, a patron uh, for just one dollar a month. These videos have been released to my patrons a few weeks earlier than I am putting them out on YouTube. So. For that $1 a month, you're getting access to early videos, but I also do a lot of stuff. I do live crafting videos where I interact with you. I can call you up on the screen if you want. We can chat. I have things like PDFs that I upload that you can print and print out and use as props in your game. So I try to make that uh, Patreon as valuable to my patrons as I can. And for $1 a month, uh, like I said, I try to make it inexpensive for everybody. And uh, th that kind of support allows me to keep putting out videos like this. So again, if you like this, please consider becoming a patron. I would really appreciate it. All right. Until next time, uh, this is DM Jim, the tabletop engineer. I'll be back next week with another how-to video. Go make some goblin terrain. I'll talk to you later. I hope you'll forgive me for a very short advertisement here. For the last year, I've been publishing Bexham's Bizarre Gaming Magazine. Each month, a new issue has been released with articles and adventures and other resources. The magazine has been evolving and improving, and I've been very fortunate to have a lot of contributors submitting their content. If you'd like to grab a free issue, check out the description in the video below for a link. And if you'd like to subscribe, there is also information on that as well.